Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Indeed, all of my close friends know that Beris, whenever I hear Beris, I go into another dimension. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Let me at this time join the Prime Minister and to say how pleased I am, Mr. Speaker, to see this resolution where the Minister for Finance seeks the authority of Parliament to borrow from the Saudi Fund for Development the sum of approximately 75 million US dollars. Mr. Speaker, greetings to colleagues. <coughs> and it's important to understand, Mr. Speaker, what we are here to do. We are here, Mr. Speaker, to seek the authority of Parliament to borrow money to complete the St. Jude Hospital Rehabilitation Project. And this money, Mr. Speaker, will also rehabilitate the George Odlum National Stadium. Avant moi aller plus loin, Mr. Speaker, il est important pour nous savoir pour qui ça nous ici à Jodia. Nous ici à Jodia pour jouer une autorité parlement pour prêter l'argent sorti hors gouvernement Saudi, Saudi Fund for Development, gouvernement Saudi Arabia, pour nous financer projet Saint Jude et puis pour manger ce stadium là à Vieux-Fort. Mr. Speaker, it's important because the anniversary of the Saint Jude fire was just a few days ago, the 14th year since many people suffered, some died, and this is significant. I stand in solidarity, Mr. Speaker, with the families who continue to suffer the families of those who died, the family of Mr. Sudin, the family of Mr. Jabatis, and the family of Moenas Vijay. These families from Belvi, Vijay, and Piero continue to suffer. And every time an anniversary comes around, I can understand the way they feel. I also, Mr. Speaker, want to take a moment to pay tribute to all of the first respondents. On that fateful night, Mr. Speaker, the staff who on duty, the doctors, the nurses, the ancillary staff, sacrificed their lives, the nearby residents of OJ who rushed towards danger without thinking of themselves, and the people who came from near and far. While it is unacceptable, Mr. Speaker, that 14 years have passed by, we must never forget the sacrifices of all those involved. We must recall their selflessness every year and pay tribute to the remarkable show of patriotism which St. Lucians showed on that night. 14 years is not a long time. It is a long time because we have not completed the project, but it is no time for us to forget. St. Lucians are passionate about the St. Jude Hospital, Mr. Speaker. St. Lucians have shown by their actions that St. Jude continues to be high on the list of priorities. And St. Lucians continue to indicate very forcefully their wish for the St. Jude Hospital project to be completed. Complete the St. Jude Hospital, Mr. Speaker. That is what St. Lucians want so that the patients and staff can be removed from the George Odom National Stadium as soon as possible, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, before I go into the belly of the, of the resolution, it is a very interesting time for me as a parliamentarian, I must tell you, Mr. Speaker. For the boomerangs of history and the passage of time have taught me so many lessons. Very interesting, Mr. Speaker that the debate this morning on this motion to borrow 75 million or EC 200.3 million dollars, this debate brings together the member for Castries North and former Prime Minister who was Prime Minister on that fateful night, who found himself in Vieux 4 at odd hours of the night, 
It brings together the former Prime Minister, the member for VA for South. It also brings together the, another former Prime Minister, a member for Miku South, and the current Prime Minister, the member for Castries East. It's very interesting, Mr. Speaker, that all of these people are in the Parliament today. History and the passage of time, Mr. Speaker, has a way of giving you some very interesting playbacks. What, Mr. Speaker, you play, it, you play in your mind and you look at each other in the eye and together you say, what a day for all of us together to work in this parliament to deliver the people's hospital, Mr. Speaker. What a day. Mr. Speaker, this motion brings me to 2006 when I became a parliamentarian. Between 2006 and 2011, I was in opposition with the then member for VA for South, the former Prime Minister. The MP for Castries North, Mr. Speaker, was Prime Minister. I recall we mobilized, we campaigned, we held a meeting at the hospital site, we demonstrated against what the people said at the time was a lot of uncertainty. Where would they put the hospital, whether it's next to the Kakaba stretch, or where would they put it? A lot of uncertainty. But the member for Castries North, Mr. Speaker, started the project. We came into government in 2011, and the member for VA for South continued the project. The project was conceptualized, but the member for VA for South continued the project, finding a deficit, a huge deficit, and at the same time, every budget year allocating money to the project. Until he traveled to Taiwan, Mr. Speaker, and convinced our friends in Taiwan to give us a helping hand, and the member for VA for South, as Minister for Finance, secured financing to complete the hospital at the time. The work continued, Mr. Speaker. Most of the managers, as the member for Castries East and Prime Minister said a while ago, kept the work going. The work accelerated by 2016. However, the hospital was not completed before the end of our term in office. The people felt, Mr. Speaker, that despite what we campaigned on, we did not complete the hospital. And despite everything we said, the hospital was an important project and the improvement of conditions at St. Jude took center stage for them and we were booted out of office. And so, Mr. Speaker, despite the valiant efforts of the member for VA for South, who continued the project and everything was in place, the incoming government of 2016 to 2021 changed course and instead of completing the project, they stopped the project for three years. This resolution, Mr. Speaker, speaks to this history and how this history, how we are going to cure the imperfections which preceded this government. Again, the people decided, Mr. Speaker, that the last government headed by the member for Miku South did not deserve to preside over the further construction or breaking down of St. Jude anymore. And so, Mr. Speaker, they ushered in this government to do the work for them. It's very important as I look at this resolution, Mr. Speaker, to chart out this history so that none of us inside of here and the Prime Minister has said it over and over again, that nobody inside of there should play politics with the St. Jude Hospital reconstruction project. Because the people have demonstrated over and over again that they will not have it. And so woe be unto any politician who comes in here and tries to play politics with the completion of the St. Jude Hospital project. But there are things you never foresee, Mr. Speaker. In life, each of us, 
each of us have certain very strong views on political positions. And like you, Mr. Speaker, and every single colleague around the table, every single one of you has a very strong political view. And Mr. Speaker, I hold, very, I hold some very, very strong views. But for me, Mr. Speaker, there are things I never saw coming. Can you imagine today this, this resolution will be debated by the member for Castries North and where the member for Castries North is sitting today, Mr. Speaker? We are debating this resolution on St. Jude, and he was prime minister when the reconstruction started. He started it. Can you imagine that, Mr. Speaker? And for students of history after today, today will be a very important, very important day in this parliament, Mr. Speaker. And I never saw this one coming. And I have some very strong political views. Can you imagine the boomerangs of history? What they do to your mind and to your positions sometimes. Sometimes you bend and you twist. If you believe, Mr. Speaker, that certain things at this time are in the best interest of the country. So this resolution, Mr. Speaker, brings in the Member of Parliament for Castries North. A member who some years ago I stood at the St. Jude Hospital site. And if words could do what tools could do, Mr. Speaker, at the time I would have skinned him. <laughs> Because, Mr. Speaker, this St. Jude Hospital project is so close to the hearts of so many people. But when you have three constituents who perish in that fire, Mr. Speaker, people whom you knew, people whom you spoke to, you know the families, you have gone to their homes and you, you eat with them. And it's not like you hear of somebody who passed away. You actually know these people. Mr. Sudin, he always sat under his bread nut tree. He has a big bread he had a big bread nut tree at his house at VG and a very huge volcanic stone. And he was a philosopher of some sorts, always speaking about philosophy and history of the Labour Party and, 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 and what he's been through with his with his old pickup van. I speak like this, Mr. Speaker, for this resolution, because the matter of St. Jude is not just about bricks and mortar and galvanize. And that is why the last government, Mr. Speaker, did not understand the passion of the people where St. Jude is concerned. They felt that you could have taken a backhoe and just mash up a building because they believe that that's not the way to go and they can just do it. There are passions there. It's not just about brick and mortar. So this resolution, Mr. Speaker, evokes emotions. No respect for resources. And wh wh why, why didn't history, Mr. Speaker, tell me about the member for Castries Central? The member for Castries Central, again, it's interesting today that the member for Castries Central is sitting on this side. And I've crossed many swords made of words with the member for Castries Central. And I've had certain convictions and certain beliefs in the politics. But it's interesting to see the combination of the parliament for this debate on the St. Jude Hospital. It's as if the, the gods and the spirits met somewhere in the stars and decided that they would find a way to do a complot <laughs> to ensure that we finish the St. Jude Hospital reconstruction project. And so no matter where you come from, this resolution speaks to you, whether you are yellow, green, or blue wave, red, this resolution speaks to you. And today in the parliament, Mr. Speaker, we will see evidence of this. And so, Mr. Speaker, people of St. Lucia want us to complete their hospital as soon as possible. All of the debate about St. Jude, and there's a lot which will be said. For me personally, as the Prime Minister said, Mr. Speaker, Today is not the day. But today is a day where I stand to support this resolution because the people of St. Lucia want us to remove the staff and the patients, the doctors and the nurses, the ancillary staff from the George Odlum Stadium. That is what they want. The people
people of St. Lucia do not want their relatives to remain in the stadium for much longer. And this government has a responsibility, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that we fulfill, fulfill the dreams of the people. This resolution, Mr. Speaker, has, it, it brings with it hope. If you look at paragraph two, Mr. Speaker, of the resolution, and whereas it is further provided under section 64 of the act, that money borrowed by the government must be paid into the consolidated and form part of the consolidated fund. It speaks to this government borrowing money or any government and putting it into the consolidated fund. I look at paragraph four, Mr. Speaker. And whereas the Minister of Finance or for Finance considers it necessary to borrow from the Saudi Fund for Development, considers it, and I repeat, necessary to borrow. Mr. Speaker, Sir Resolution Kadi, the Ministry of Finance fait a decision and said that he is obliged to do it. It is necessary to do And we know the, the debate about borrowing. But this Minister for Finance has decided that it is necessary to do this at this time. The Member of Parliament for VA for South, at one point, as Prime Minister decided at the time that it was necessary to borrow to complete the hospital. We lost the government and that was not to be. Although the member for VA for South went to get the money. The reason that was not to be, Mr. Speaker, I can tell you, is for another very long debate. Mr. Speaker, if you look at paragraph five, paragraph four, sorry, paragraph Let's look at paragraph four. A while ago I spoke about paragraph three. The loan is repayable in 20 years after the grace period of five years. So Mr. Speaker, nous ni 20 l'année pour vie payer l'argent ça là. Nous ka joine 5 l'année ko nou pa ka payer pièce l'argent et après 5 l'année, nous ni alors 20 l'année pour vie payer l'argent ça là. Ko sa ministre finance fait un bon décision. À 10%. Comme ça, le ministre de Finance fait une bonne décision. Sur so, l'agence, il n'y a pas de tristesse en tant qu'il est venu. Et qu'il a fait pour une bonne raison. Mr. Speaker, when you look at the, the repayment, again, the repayment, as the member for Cashflow Central said, 2%. And it is necessary at this time. We cannot operate at the stadium for much longer. And all of the reasons have been put forward before. When we complete the rehabilitation of the St. Jude Hospital at OJ, there will obviously be greater opportunity to employ advanced equipment to improve service to the people of St. Lucia. There will be greater opportunity for collaborations and partnerships with internationally recognized hospitals and universities, Mr. Speaker. We will have an opportunity to return the St. Jude Hospital to an institution of pride and a flagship institution, not only for the South or not only in the South, but for St. Lucia and for the region. And I've said before, Mr. Speaker, at this podium and in this parliament, that the story of, of the St. Jude Hospital is a very wonderful and beautiful story. We have had our challenges, and the St. Jude Hospital has many challenges today. There are several challenges which we are facing head on. And those challenges, I've spoken about them before, Mr. Speaker, and I will continue to speak about them. But these challenges will be overcome. But St. Jude Hospital has a proud history of service. And we want, we want to return the hospital to that very proud history. And what is different today, Mr. Speaker? Based on all the documents, it is very clear that the financing was secured. When the last government came in in 2016, the financing was secured. It was accessible, and the level of construction at the hospital was at a, at a stage where at least 
for the latest by September 2017, for the latest, it could have been done before, they could have completed the hospital because there was a procurement schedule, services had been procured, and the commissioning could have happened. This was achievable, Mr. Speaker. There was money, services procured, materials, and this for the latest could have happened by September 2017. A lot of puppy show happened after that. A lot of puppy show, which I've said before is for another debate. When you look at the, the cost comparisons, Mr. Speaker, the St. Jude Hospital Reconstruction Project at OJ, the original site of phase one, the stage it was at where they found it, the unit rate of construction was about EC $358,000 per square foot. $358 per square foot, sorry. $358 per square foot. When they went into the box, when you compare the cost, Mr. Speaker, the unit rate for construction was already $766 per square foot at the stage they were at. At the stage they were at, they had not even done the roof yet. And why all of this and all the charade and there was no, there was no roof as such is for, again for another show. So Mr. Speaker, you can see the different rates and you can see that this incoming government had to make a decision and this decision was guided not only by the rates but by technical experts who advise that we complete the original buildings. Mr. Speaker, no indication of the future cost of the box of phase two. And even when they went into that phase two, Mr. Speaker, they had to use part of the phase one. Again, Mr. Speaker, I will save the meat of all of this for the next debate. But just to tell you that when this government looked at everything and the advice of the technical experts, the Prime Minister made a decision and said, we cannot finance this hospital by budgetary allocations every year or else we may not finish. Let me reach out to a friendly government to see or how we can get a loan to finance the rest of the construction. Mr. Speaker, the three sources of finance, and since we are talking about financing, this resolution is about financing, Mr. Speaker, I just want to remind honorable members and the general public of a few things, which I'm sure you have heard about already. But I think it's important within the context of this debate. The three sources of finance, Mr. Speaker, the US $10 million from the export import bank of the Republic of China, Taiwan, the Exim Bank. Another US $20 million loan from the Exim Bank in 2020. And the first loan, you recall that I've said, the member for VA for South worked very hard to ensure that we had the money at the time. But the third source of financing, local counterpart funds approved for the project in the annual estimates over the years. And I indicated to you, if you go to Hansard, Mr. Speaker, I indicated to you the challenges that the former Minister of Finance and member for VFOR South, former Prime Minister, had when we got into government in 2011 with the deficit and the decisions which led him to the Export Import Bank to ensure that there was financing. And he never his government, I was part of the government, the member for Castries East, the member for Denry North, the member for Labry, the member for Soufre. We were part of that government. And every single cabinet meeting, the St. Jude Hospital. What are we going to do? We must finish it. He didn't go and break down buildings because it was the member for Castries North who was prime minister. 
He continued the project. And so you see now the financing. And now, Mr. Speaker, we have loan financing to complete the project. This loan seeks to ensure that the project does not suffer from a lack of financing, Mr. Speaker, as we move full speed ahead to complete and to deliver the hospital to the people of St. Lucia. Meanwhile, Mr. Speaker, we know that the conditions at the stadium are not ideal. They have never been ideal, and they can never be ideal for a hospital. The Prime Minister and Member of Parliament for Castries is spoke about it earlier. But then you'll say, Mr. Speaker, well, you are, new, you are a two-year-old government. Even though you are working on the rehabilitation of the hospital, what have you done? And I will not spend time today, Mr. Speaker, to tell you everything we have done, but just to say that we are concerned not only about the rehabilitation of the hospital and the completion of the project, but we are also concerned about the conditions at the stadium currently. We have been concerned from the time we came into government, and not only concerned, we have expended resources to ensure that the canopies were removed, these glass canopies removed and replaced. We are ensuring even now, even now if you go to the hospital, to the stadium, you will see an operation which has been in place for a few months to remove all of the metal, the, 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 the metal pole lines and the joints on the roof of the stadium. All of that is happening now. All the chairs which flew around during hurricanes or storms, we have removed all of these and that this work is ongoing. We have made efforts to, to block some of the joints where water seeps in, 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 into the rooms and so on. We have done, we have purchased new equipment, anesthesiology machines, x-ray machines, heart monitors, and almost every three months, you see it in the media and on Facebook, we work with the hospital to ensure that they get new equipment, new supplies, but there's a lot of work to be done. This place, Mr. Speaker, needs a lot of attention, but we are doing as much as we can to make the situation better while we work on the rehabilitation of the St. Jude Hospital at OG. So we are doing all of this. The transitioning of the hospital, Mr. Speaker. So while this resolution speaks to the, the construction and so on, the transitioning is very important. The St. Jude Hospital has a transitioning team, and they have activated that. The review team suggested to the government that we get expertise from, from Pan American Health Organization or other expertise to help us to transition from the stadium to the, the site at OJ, and we have done so. We have an expert from the Pan American Health Organization who is working with us. This expert has come to St. Lucia a number of times, and this expert is working with us to transition the hospital from the stadium to the site at OG. Are not paying $2 million a month? No, we are not. <laughs> we are not at all. We have a project steering committee, Mr. Speaker, headed by Mr. Michael Williams, and they are meeting to ensure that we, we move things along as we should. Mr. Speaker, I want to say something. I am very thankful to the Minister for Finance, very thankful that the Minister has in, included the Ministry of Health in the decision making as we move ahead to complete the hospital. The Ministry of Health, Mr. Speaker, has representatives on the committee, and Mr. Speaker, we have engaged the doctors and nurses, they have done a walkthrough, and the issues that were highlighted, the doctors and the nurses, Mr. Speaker, have indicated what changes they, they, they want to see, and we have involved them in the process moving forward. So I want to thank the Prime Minister for involving the Ministry, and this reconstruction project, Mr. Speaker, is not a one-man know-it-all project. No one minister or anybody goes down to the site and decides which building to break down. 
and which tractor to use to break down buildings, Mr. Speaker. We are doing this together, and we are going to achieve our objectives, Mr. Speaker. I want to Mr. Speaker, that the agent that we have to pay is important, because before, the member of Parliament came to the South, the Premier Minister, he went to the agent to finish the hospital. And with all the reports that we have, when we have le même parlement vieux fois ça a été premier ministre l'argent qui était là il était allé à Taïwan acheter l'argent prêté pour finir l'hôpital là avec la tésanie contrat pour pour équipement la tésanie contrat pour service et la tésanie contrat pour finir l'hôpital là mais nous perdons l'élection avec l'autre gouvernement croisé à Antwi gouvernement croisé à Yo croisé building, yo du bout l'hôpital là, monsieur Speaker, avec à présent, yo allé, yo a fait un lot building qui court bret, il pani fait taille, il n'y a pas de chauffeur qui aura pu faire taille, et là nous garder, c'est quand il pour y a pour finir, go bret ça là, nous quand on était quand pour nous trois plages, et export de nous pour finir l'hôpital là qui en rouge là. Mais c'est ce qui est important pour que les gens qui là, il y a trois différentes manières que le gouvernement a dépensé l'argent pour finir l'hôpital. Il y a un parlement qui vient de faire ça à Il joue 10 millions de dollars américains. L'autre gouvernement est venu, 20 millions de dollars. 20. 20 millions de dollars américains. L'autre gouvernement a tué. Il a allé acheter l'argent à Taïwan aussi. Avec tous les années, nous avons mis l'argent en budget. Comme ça, nous avons si nous continuons, quand nous avons l'argent en budget pour finir l'hôpital, peut-être nous avons tomber en faillite. Comme ça, ça, Premier ministre, même Parlement qui a fait, il est allé prêter l'argent sorti de Saudi Arabia pour nous finir l'hôpital. Il est important pour nous savoir, M. Speaker, qui pas dit nous avons fait ça, nous avons aidé la situation en stadium. Les gens qui sont allés à l'hôpital, ils ont été tués dans l'hôpital, ils ont été tués dans l'hôpital, avec l'autre façade, ils ont été tués dans la glace, ces glaces-là ont été tombées, ils nous ont tiré ça, nous avons mis en neuf. Nous avons acheté l'équipement, nous avons gagné dans l'hôpital Saint-Jude. Anesthésiologie, machine, ça veut dire que nous avons fait l'opération. Nous avons mis des bagages pour dormir, nous avons gagné ça neuf. Extreme machine, hack monitors, et combien d'autres, combien, combien, combien d'autres équipements. Nous aussi avons aidé l'hôpital là pour un gérer ces bagages. Pas du temps, nous avons fini l'hôpital là en OG. Aussi, l'année en bagage en anglais, nous avons créé transition plan. Ça veut dire que nous avons fini l'année en manière pour tirer les gens. Docteur Nos a dans l'hôpital et mette ou a dans l'autre hôpital neuf. Nous avons travaillé ça. Nous avons un expert qui sorti par où, Pan American Health Organization, qui a aidé nous. Et nous n'avons pas payé un million, un million de dollars pour ça. Aussi, M. Speaker, nous avons parlé avec ces gens qui n'y ont pas 8 millions de dollars, cette licien. Et qui ont parlé de la pièce gouvernement. Et le Premier ministre là, nous avons joué, nous avons là. Nous t'adons en, en, en fonction que le même Parlement vient fois sous de là aussi. Et bien, nous dit nous, l'année équipement là, nous pas attendre le nous pas attendre le gouvernement, nous pas attendre rien. Ce que ça nous dit aussi, parler avec Saint-Jude, nous, nous faisons jouer avec Jean Saint-Jude, avec ça, nous avons fait pour nous. Ce équipement qui te, nous est ordre, bon à présent, ce équipement ça a brisé venir en neuf. Quand ça, nous finir l'hôpital là, c'est équipement nous qui jouons là, nous qui équipement state of the art, top class équipement qui neuf. Ça me cadeau, M. Speaker. Premier ministre ça là, ça évolué ministre santé. Premier secrétaire ministre santé, si un mois avec l'autre monde, Jean qui travaille Saint Jude, c'est euh, docteur Saint Jude, ils ont tout évolué à ça fait ça là. Ça pas un bagage, yon nom qui croit ça avec mené tracta croiser l'hôpital baï comme ça c'est pas comme ça nous ca travailler tout le monde évolué avec nous ca délivrer l'hôpital là baï Jean pays cette ici monsieur speaker moi ca supporter résolution ça là i support this resolution 
And Mr. Speaker, I want to say to the families of those who perished in the fire that there is unfinished business with you and government. Bagay ki kumase pou ou, kome tan pase, kai vini a da resolution. Nou ka jwenn manye legal pou anje za fe sa la. We have unfinished business with you also. So, Mr. Speaker, as a member of Parliament for VA for South, I stand proud today. But the real day, you vote North. <laughs> As a member of Parliament for Viewport North, <laughs> I love Viewport South too, you know. <laughs> As a member of Parliament for Viewport North, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I am not only proud, but it's a, it's it's really a humbling experience. And I know, Mr. Speaker, the member of Parliament for Library, and of course the former Prime Minister, member of Parliament for Viewport South. I am sure today is critical and important. But you know what, Mr. Speaker? I will take my seat on this note. The glorious moment, this is important today, very important. But the glorious moment will be on this joyous daybreak, if the member for Labry will allow me to use some of his words. On this joyous daybreak, when we will go to the St. Jude Hospital, having transitioned all the patients, the staff, it will be a solemn moment, but it will be a day of rejoicing, a day to thank God and the Holy Spirit that finally, finally, we have delivered the People's Project to the people. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.